Now, uh, there's a website you can go to, the Desire Database, to find out information on interconnection, net metering, solar incentives, and a variety of energy topics. It's a little bit difficult to research battery and storage incentives on Desire because they don't have it programmed up yet as a category. So, for instance, uh, to find out about California's battery incentives, that's a standalone program. Um, and if you Google storage desire California, that's an easier way to find it than you looking within the website. Similarly, uh, New York has a storage incentive for commercial customers, and it's, it's a pretty good one um, for small battery bank. And, uh, but it's part of their solar program. So you can't find it by looking for batteries. You have to go look at the, 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 the words of their commercial solar incentive program. Uh, Maryland has a storage incentive as well. It's a competitive tax credit uh, that the application start at the beginning of next year. And I expect it will, will fully fulfill because it's a, a limited budget opportunity. So the real big markets for storage right now are New York and California. Although, you know, what's surprising to me is that you get into states like Mississippi where there's no solar growth to speak of and the, the storage market uh, might be what brings the solar market to those states. So, you know, there's, there's a billion ways a utility can slice and dice their electric policy to avoid the revenue loss caused by solar. Uh, but cheap batteries are going to be extremely disruptive uh, just on their own, but also in combination with solar. So the Desire website is a really good website to poke around with. You can find out about sales tax exemptions. You know, about 10% of the U.S. has that. Property tax exemptions. Uh, there's, there's one section called a solar easement or a wind and access rights, which is the right to sunlight on your property which might sound like something that comes out of California or like out of a over bureaucratic society, but actually the right to sunlight on your property stretches back into 600 AD into Justinian code, where if you had a, if you were living in a cave and someone built a mud hut in front of your cave window, you'd be pretty upset about that. And um, you know, back then when you don't have electricity, the maybe sunlight is all the more important. So back then, you know, if you were a Roman citizen, you had rights to sunlight on your property. And today you have similar rights. You know, what, what is called a solar easement. And if your your county has accepted that it will file solar easements, then your it protects the horizon view to your uh, array. You can find out about state green energy purchases, green loan standards. It's a, it's a really great website that's put out by the North Carolina Solar Center in conjunction with National Renewable Energy Labs. So if you have questions about, well, do I need insurance to have a solar array? Do I need to name my utility as an additional insured? Uh, what are the fees for interconnection? What is the response times? What's the process? What do I need as part of my application? Who do I contact? All of that can be found uh, by researching your state-specific uh, DesireUSA.org uh, policy. Uh, Solar Pro is a great magazine. Uh, there's a, a kind of a, a home version of it for residential called Home Power. Solar Pro is more for installers. It's a free magazine, and they they have it's like the best magazine in the, the industry if you really want to explore technical issues of solar design. Um, Home Power is a really fun magazine for that matter, but it's just a little bit more of a of a these are cool residential energy devices rather than more skill building. But there's, if you, if you go and you look hard enough, there's a variety of either high quality commercial solar design software or other kinds of, of services that you could use to get more into the inner industry. There's solar reviews, which is uh, kind of like Yelp for the solar industry. 
Um, this is a really good solar education website for the basics, more of the upstream side, like how a solar module works. Uh, solar Training Network is kind of like a, a free um, community for trading job opportunities and advertising training programs. You know, we have a trade organization. Um, you know, one area where you can get some data is your, your online monitoring systems like in phase and SMA and uh, whatever, they will have, many will have, Enphase has, SMA has public systems on their website that if you go into their monitoring area, you can find systems out in the field where the homeowner has determined just to make their production data available. And that could be really good for kind of fine tuning if you're uncomfortable with the PV watts D rate, you want something exact for your area, you know, it's easy for me to do because I have installs in the field with their data and I can kind of see what I did with my design and how that related to overall system efficiency. You can kind of do similar things with this. Like I was, um, I was doing a feasibility report for uh, a project in Africa and there weren't any weather monitoring stations nearby in this area but i was able to find an in-phase micro inverter system that was online in the area and able to kind of back into some uh performance estimation that way and then there's professional services uh, uh the solar design software SREC trade, trades renewable energy credits. Right before the break, I was telling you about that uh, block solar blockchain uh, that you can use for community solar platforms. Green Tech Media is a, a great uh, solar media organization. They put out a lot of content. And then uh, also the, the EIA.gov is a great website for energy statistics and information. Finally, the, the last free product uh, that you should take a look at is is the the next step beyond PV watts, which is the system advisor model by NREL. It's like PV watts on steroids. It just does more stuff like rate modeling and some basic battery bank modeling. So NABCEP is a website you can go to. They have a installer locator, and you can find people like me who have this NABCEP certificate to help you out with your projects at a local level.